Hi, this is Dr. Lee Mancini. I'm the chief of the division of sports and exercise medicine at the UMass Memorial Health Center and the UMass Chan Medical Center. I'm also the director of the primary care sports and exercise medicine fellowship and an associate professor in the Department of Family Medicine and Community Health. This is part of the AMSSM Family Medicine Radiology Project, and today I'll be talking to you about the hip joint. I have nothing to disclose. So today we're gonna to learn a systematic approach to reading MSK x-rays of the hip and pelvis. We will review three common adult findings on x-ray and discuss clinical condition correlation of these x-ray findings. The three most common views of the hip joint are typically a pelvis view, which you see here in the middle uh, top, an AP of the hip, which you see in the bottom right, and a frog leg view, which you see in the bottom left. There is also the Dunn view, which we'll be discussing as well. In the AP view, this gives us a great view of the pubic symphysis. We also can look at the contour of the iliac crest. We also can see the ischial tuberosity where the hamstrings attach and the anterior superior iliac spine where the sartorius attaches and the anterior inferior iliac spine where the rectus femoris attaches. The AP view of the hip gives us a closer look at the actual ball and socket of the hip joint. We can see the acetabulum. We can evaluate the shape and contour of the femoral head. We have a better view and a close-up view of the lesser tuberosity where the iliopsoas attaches and the greater tuberosity. This is the, the positioning for a frog leg view. Again, on the frog leg view, you can have an excellent view of the acetabulum and the femoral head. So you can see that femoral acetabular joint. Again, you have a different view of the lesser tuberosity and a good view of the greater tuberosity. And you can see why this is called a frog legs view in the bottom left with the patient positioning. The done view of the hip joint is an excellent view if you're further evaluating the hip for femoral acetabular impingement or FAI, which we'll talk about later in this talk. Here's the positioning for the done view. And again, you can easily see the femoral acetabular joint from this view. So the three common adult conditions that we, we see the most for hip and felt pelvis pathology on x-ray are primary osteoarthritis of the hip joint, which you can see best here in the bottom left view, FAI of the hip, which is femoral acetabular impingement, which you can see in the bottom right, and osteitis pubis, which you can see in the top right image. So for primary osteoarthritis of the hip, and here you have an x-ray where on the right side of our image, you can see a normal hip joint. You can see good joint space between the head of the femur and the acetabulum, where on the opposite side, you can see an arthritic hip. And there are three main findings that you can see on x-ray. Number one is decreased joint space between the head of the femur and the acetabulum. Number two is sometimes you can see cystic changes in the head of the femur. And the third thing is you can see these sclerotic changes in the bone where the two bones are pushing against us, which looks brighter and more white than the normal side. And you can compare the two sides. So these are common findings for osteoarthritis of the hip on an AP pelvis view. On a regular AP view, not the AP pelvis view, again, you can look for joint space narrowing, Again, you can see a normal hip x-ray on the left of an AP view, and on the image on the right, you can see arthritic changes. You can see some increased sclerosis and some decreased joint space. For x-ray findings on the frog leg view, you can go ahead and get, then see that decreased joint space on the image on the bottom left, and so you can see some increased sclerotic changes as well as compared to the x-ray on the right, which shows a normal, healthy, non-arthritic hip joint. Common presentations or physical exam findings that you'll see. One is you'll see decreased hip range of motion, specifically if you have the hip flexed to 90 degrees and you're looking at degrees of external and internal rotation. 
Um, also, patients can have uh, increased pain in the hip with hip motion. And a lot of times the patients will say they have what we call this C sign, where they have pain in the front of the hip, but also pain that wraps around posteriorly. Common patient demographics are patients who are older, patients with any sort of history of hip surgery in their past, and patients with an increased BMI because of the stress of weight on that hip socket and hip joint. Our second condition is FAI or femoral acetabular impingement. And there are three types of FAI. Cam impingement like cam shafts on gears are the fit between the, the head of the femur where instead of the head of the femur being nice and rounded like a ball, there's bony buildup either on the superior aspect or the inferior aspect of that femoral head. And that's a cam deformity. The pincer deformity, think like pincers like the claw of a lobster or a crab, is when you have bony overgrowth of the acetabulum, either on the top or on the bottom. Here you see a cam deformity in the top right image. You see a pincer deformity in the bottom, in the bottom right image. And the third type is mixed or combined, where you have a combination of both a cam type deformity and a pincer type deformity. And you see the illustration in this bottom left, you can see the pincer type with that acetabulum coming down. And then you see the bony buildup uh, on the femoral head and neck, which gives you a cam lesion. So here are some findings that you'll see on an AP x-ray. Again, on the bottom left is a normal x-ray. On the top right, you can see the bony buildup where those two dark arrows are pointing to, and that shows a cam lesion. And on the middle one where you see the white arrow, you can see it pointing to that acetabular overhang consistent with a pincer type deformity. Here you see some findings on the frog leg view. Again, you can look to see um, whether there's acetabular overhang or if there's evidence of a cam deformity and bony buildup on the shape of the femoral head. So the done view, which is this view here, is one of the best views to further evaluate FAI. And again, you can see here on the left hip, which is obviously to our right side of this image, a cam deformity, you can see that bony buildup around the femoral head and neck. So some clinical information about FAI, about 30% of the general population has FAI. Pincer deformities are more common in women than men, while, while cam deformities are more common in men than women. Again, usually patients will present with some decreased range of motion in their hip joint. They will also have increased pain with hip mobility and also will present with that C sign that we talked about before. When you see someone with FAI, they are at increased risk uh, for labral pathology within that hip joint. We commonly see this in athletes in sports with repetitive and superphysiologic hip rotation and flexion, ice hockey in particular, but also basketball and football. And this can lead to some adaptive remodeling of that hip joint. Our third and final clinical case for common hip x-ray findings are, is osteoiditis pubis. So osteoiditis pubis is increased sclerotic changes, specifically around where the two parts of our right and left uh, pubic bones meet. Um, so it's on either side of our pubic symphysis. So you can see here on the left, a normal AP pelvis view normal healthy bone um, uh, of, our, of our pelvic bones. And on the right, where you see that yellow arrow pointing to, you see increased sclerotic changes. And there can be irregularities. It can be increased, increased sclerosis, meaning the bone is much more bright white. Um, so clinical information is information along the pubic symphysis on either side of that pubic symphysis, loss of range of motion in the groin, adult aching pain right in their groin area, Pain that usually is worse with running, kicking, and changing directions, specifically lateral motions. Patients will also sometimes complain of pain standing up, pain getting out of the car. This is something that, that um, we see an increased incident of also in pregnancy. And the common sports we'll see osteitis pubis is football, rugby, ice hockey, and tennis. So in summary, we talked about common views of the hip x-rays, the AP view, the frog leg view, the pelvis view. 
and then the done view, which is specifically used to further evaluate FAI. Uh, also, we talked about three common hip conditions, primary osteoarthritis of the hip, FAI, femoral acetabular impingement of our three types, cam deformity, pincer type deformity, and combined or mixed, which is a combination of both, and osteitis pubis. Thank you so much.